Hi folks, today we're going to be talking about Comet Ison and its link to comets in the past, and whether or not it's related to comets that have appeared in a pattern of 333 years. So first we're going to talk about the Great Comet of 1680. Now for a while it was thought that the Great Comet of 1680 might somehow be related to Ison. They're both sun grazers, they both approached Earth, or are about to approach Earth, at a distance of about 0.4 astronomical units. They're both sun grazers, and they are both long period comets. Now, the Great Comet of 1680 was so bright at one point, it was visible in broad daylight. It's also notable for being the first comet that was discovered by a telescope. But the question is, is it related to Ison? So I've loaded up the orbital elements from uh, the uh, Great Comet of 1680, which I pulled out of cometography. You can see the orbital elements right there. I've put them into Starry Night Pro, and you can see the Great Comet of 1680 here approaching the Sun and Ison's orbit is displayed right next to it. You see this other blue line here, and that's Ison's orbit. And as you can see, they're pretty similar. But they have one important difference that uh, has caused astronomers to think that they are probably not related to each other. And that's the fact that the Great Comet of 1680 is actually an elliptical, in an elliptical orbit. It is not hyperbolic. And so as a result, it will one day return to the inner solar system. Ison, on the other hand, is in a hyperbolic orbit. It's making a one-time trip through the inner solar system. This is its first and last time. And so it may not be related at all. It probably comes from uh, farther in the Oort cloud at a greater distance and uh, is probably not related to the Comet of 1680. But it is a pretty remarkable coincidence that they were both approaching Earth, or did approach Earth, at about the same distance, and same goes for the Sun. And at the very least, the Great Comet of 1680 is hopefully an indication of how wonderful Comet Ison will be. It's kind of on the ridiculously optimistic side of things, but uh, you never know. So, now let's take a look at the next comet in that pattern, the Comet of 1347, which some have said is somehow related to, or in fact is, Comet Ison, and that it simply reappears every 333 years. Well, we know that's not true for right off the bat for the fact that uh, Ison is in a hyperbolic orbit, and again, this is its first and last trip through the inner solar system. So it certainly wasn't here 333 years ago, let alone 666 years ago. Nevertheless, uh, let's take a look and see if where if uh, the Comet of 30, 1347 is in any way compatible with that claim. So we don't have orbital elements for this comet, unfortunately, but what we do have is a specific location and a specific time as seen from Earth. In August of 1347 it was seen in Taurus and then it was seen to move into Perseus. So let's go to 1347 in Starry Night. Go to August and let's go to Earth and see how that looks compared to the orbits of the Comet of 1680 and Ison. So we'll now let the program fly us to Earth. And here we are. And you can see Ison's orbit and Great Comet of 1680. And you can see what constellations those orbits run through. Now, if another comet were somehow related to those two comets on approximately the same orbit, it would be going through the same constellations, Gemini, Cancer, or Leo. But that is not where the comet of 1347 was seen. It was seen in Taurus, and it was seen to move into Perseus. So we can safely conclude that uh, the comet of 1347 is not related to Ison, or 1680. But we can follow that pattern back another 333 years, and we'll probably find another comet. And that's because comets are quite common. There was a comet in 1348, uh, there was a comet in 1345, these things happen. And so if you just throw a dart at the board and you land on a year, there's a good chance you're going to find a comet in that year, unless you're talking really ancient history where records weren't really kept. So if we go back another 333 years, back to the year 1014, we actually do find another comet. So let me scroll down here. And here we are. 
C 1014 C 1. Now that systematic designation means we actually have an orbit for this one. And indeed, I've loaded up the orbital elements into uh, Starry Night Pro here. Here we go. Now, this of course was found before the telescopic error, so the orbital elements are more of a rough figure, but they give us at least a good approximation of the orbit, enough to see what it looks like and see if it looks anything like I saw in 1680. So, I've already loaded those elements up. Let's go back to 1014. And let's see, when was perihelion on this comet? It was April 1014. There we go. Now let's go back to the Sun. And we'll get a good overview of what we can see the solar system see if that orbit looks anything like uh, Great Comet of 1680 or ISON. So here's the uh, orbit of the comet of 1014, C 1014, C1. And you can see it is highly inclined to the ecliptic, and it doesn't look anything like the orbits of Ison or 1680. There's just no relationship there at all comes from a completely different part of the solar system. Let me uh, zoom back in here. So 1680, I'm sorry, 1014, came from about this direction, constellation Octans, whereas Ison and the Great Comet of 1680 come from this region over here, Gemini, Cancer, that sort of area. So we're talking completely different parts of the sky, completely different comets. So it's just a matter of confirmation bias. If you pick a random year, there's a decent chance you're going to find a comet that appeared in that year. There's always comets that are out there. And so it's just not unlikely to run into one, and so you can very easily establish a pattern just like this. Unfortunately, if you look in more detail, you find that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean the orbits are related at all. Uh, it's not the same object reappearing every 333 years. It's not even the same population from the same population of comets. So that's pretty much that for that particular claim. Um, but it is an interesting coincidence there, at least with the Comet of 1680 and Ison. They do have very similar orbits, and hopefully they will put on uh, a similar show. Hopefully Ison will become just as much of a great comet as the Comet of 1680. I'm not holding my breath on that, but Ison has experienced an outburst in the last couple days, and it's now naked eye magnitude, if only barely so. And so if it continues this uh, trend, and continues to hold together through perihelion, we should see a nice comet at least. Maybe not quite as, as incredible as the Comet of 1680, but it should at least uh, be a fairly easy naked eye target. So I'll keep doing webcasts of ISON as it approaches, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully uh, by December we'll have a very nice comet to look at, both by naked eye and binoculars. So with that, I hope you have a nice day.